Hey guys, today we get to look at the promo cards and two new cards that were not spoiled before. Now I'm gonna take my best guess. This is the first time I've seen these cards. The first one is Shauna's Sisei's Legacy. Pretty good card. Interesting that it's an uncommon. I would have not guessed that. The next one is a 5-4. I have no idea what that is. But the blue card is Opt. So these cards are in Spanish. And I'm almost certain the blue card is Opt because I've seen that before. The next one is another legendary creature that's a 4-6. The green one is for one green is Land of War Elves. Clearly Elves the Land of War. The land, I'm going to, I don't, I think it's a new land. And it looks like it has scry one. Oh, okay. It's a land where you play, put it in play and then you scry one. And it produces colorless, which is very good for Aldrazi's because they don't care about the colored mana anyway. Yeah, I actually prefer colorless. Next is a black card that has been talked about a lot. One in the black, instant speed, destroy target non-legendary creature. That's OP. That's very good for standard. And then we have a Jin of some type. All right, let's see how we did. Shauna, Legacy of Sisei, legendary creature, human warrior, cannot be the target of abilities your opponent controls. Guess plus one, plus one for each creature you control. And the flavor text is, I inherited many treasures, but none as precious as knowing how my ancestors lived. Pretty cool. Steel Leaf Champion, creature, elf knight, cannot be blocked by creatures with two or less. This is obviously a ode to elven riders. One of the, one of the most iconic elf cards that wasn't actually card type elf. Opt, so we get an opt promo that looks gorgeous. I mean, you don't, for the FNM promos, you don't have to go out of your way to print like extremely valuable stuff. Just print stuff that's useful that you know will see play. Opt is a good example of that. Fire Song and Sun Speaker, legendary creature, Minotaurs, so Minotaurs. Cleric, red instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Whenever a white instant or sorcery spell gains you life, deals free damage to target player, creature, or player. Pretty cool. Turns everything into like a type of lightning helix. Land of War of Elves, I don't have to go into detail. It's a one drop that produces one green. Zafia Waste Land. Oh, is it a waste? That would be interesting. Because then you could tutor for it. So it's the scry, scry one, tap one, colorless. Fall into obscurity, instant, destroy target, non-legendary creature. Zahid, genie of the lamp. You may pay free in a blue and tap and untap artifact you control instead of paying the mana cost of this spell. So kind of like a, what is that mechanic in Champions or in Kamigawa where you devour or something? I think we just emerge. Very similar to a merge, but for artifacts. All right, so where do I see the values of these cards being? I see Opt being semi-valuable. Uh, it's definitely going to get more people to join FNM. The Land of War Elves, that's the real winner to me. Land of War Elves is such a good card in ED8, Legacy Elves. Like, I mean, I don't think it's played in Legacy Elves, is it? But overall, it's a very useful card. It's a card that is both iconic and eternal and would be great for the Masters 25 or great for the 25 year anniversary in promo with new artwork. The waste, assuming that is a waste, you have made Aldrazi slightly better and this should be a four of in Aldrazi decks in modern. Adrazis want colorless mana. This provides it to them and gives them a scry ability. It also has some implications in miracles almost. Because anytime you have a land that does something else, it's very good. So uh, when a land comes into play untapped and it gives you an advantage, that's amazing. 
Uh, ends on common, so that's good to know. The card that will impact standard most is the black card. If it really is one in a black, destroy target non-legendary creature at instant speed, then yeah, legendary creatures should be more common given that this set has uncommon ones. But it should be able to hit all the big dragons and creatures that you have to worry about. It doesn't hit Scarab God, and there's a few other ones that it has trouble hitting. But instant speed removal for two is so good. It is very good. Now the Minotaur is interesting. It probably costs like a bazillion, so probably not worth it. These promos look pretty good. I'm not sure how they, uh, these people get promos so early or why it is announced in such a visually unappealing. You can see the images are all different sizes and it seems like there's white background in some of them. But I'm glad to see it. I am excited. I think this set will be good. And I think the power level. So here, here I've always criticized sets for low power level. Hour of Devastation got cut off because they sucked. And I knew it sucked because I looked at cards and say, okay, none of these cards are good. And you, you just can tell. If you play Magic long enough, you can tell if a set is going to be power level good or power level bad. So I knew RTR was power level high. And I knew the recent sets have been the lowest power level we've ever seen. And I wonder, when can we return back to RTR power level? It's this set. The set is very good. Uh, in terms of modern playability, I think you see five or six cards. Easily played in modern which cannot be said about any sets of recent history. Maybe Oath of the Gatewatch, but that's really all because it's one modern deck, Aldrazi. I like it. Uh, I like it. I would say do not buy Modern Masters 25. That's kind of a, it's kind of lighting your money on fire at this point. Like I've seen videos where people say Imperial Recruit is $60. Like, How? The prices are not done dropping. They have plummeted into oblivion, right? Imperial Recruiter, as of the time of recording of the box opening, was $60. As soon as you upload it, it's down to $40. And then if you waited a week, now it's down to $30. Like, that's just the reality of a master set is some of these prices are not realistic uh, that are being quoted all the time. And the people opening these boxes should understand that. It's all about expected value. What is the expected value and expected playability of these cards long term? I can tell you, Lana War Elves promo is going to be valuable long term. I have no doubt in my mind. I can tell you, Opt promo is going to be some semi valuable long term. Not as good as Path to Exile, obviously. I can tell you that Wasteland is going to be valuable. And I can tell you, many cards in this set. The legendary cards, they will have masked EDH appeal. Now, I can't pinpoint exactly what they are yet, but some of them are incredibly unique. And what I look for when I look for at a set is, is the card unique? Or if I've seen it before, is it done in a unique way? Like finally, I've seen her ability before, but it's a unique because it's on a creature. And that deck always wants a creature. It would much rather have a creature that can protect and attack and still have the ability stacked to it than something that would just be an artifact. So I look at the set, the power level is good, the promo cards are good, and it's $4 a pack. It's, you can buy boxes all day for $90 a box. So I think when you talk about price point, it does play a big difference. Like if your price point is 240 or 250 and you're selling for 180, 190, I'm not impressed, right? That's not impressive for the value you're getting in these supposed amazing packs because you can open two packs of this, right? So why would anyone open one pack of Modern Masters when you can own, open two packs of this and still have standard to play in or even to draft it more available? So I like the set. I would advise saving money for the set. Pre-release, I think, is April 26th, 28th, something like that. I will be attending pre-release, assuming I'm not banned, and I will be announcing where I attend. Uh, probably I'll drive into the city. I think it's fun. Pre-release is the most fun event, in my opinion, because you get to play with new cards. There's no like advantage, really, because it's new for everybody. 
and people are just friendlier in general, which you might think is ironic that I would base going on to place based on friendliness, but it is true. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.